Dave's Age. Here we go. We're going to take a look at uh, Devin Haney and Vasily Lomachenko. Also, Katie Taylor versus Chantel Cameron. And we're going to take a quick look back at our last show. We uh, Sal Canelo Alvarez weekend was very profitable for us. We hit the Bet US lock, which was nine picks, 100 for 81.97, uh, 181.97, of course, back. And we did an eight leg on FanDuel as well. So guys like Pitters, Gibbs, Denny, Whitaker, Price, girl like Price, Lauren Price, Joshua Boatze, Martinez, and Alvarez. We also called uh, Sean McComb, I like to call him McDiddy, to win on points at plus 140. That was our pick of the week. We were happy to get that out as well. Uh, I did pick Alvarez for the knockout. Somehow survived till the end. Those of you that watch the show, Miguel, my man, you mentioned it. Plus 350 to go the distance, regardless of who won, uh, was a fantastic bet. I'm glad we got that out there. People could could see that this fight could do that. You mentioned the hometown, everybody, and your cousin and brothers and whatnot, and your bakers asking you for tickets. It's a great call on that one, Miguel. Um, that, no, that I gotta, was a I gotta good take weekend. my ass off to Ryder because. You know, he came to fight, and, uh, you know, it, it, when he came back and actually had a great round seven for, you know, active and, and from when he was, we were, I, you know, you started to think, okay, maybe that bet was a good recommendation. And I hope some of the people out there may have covered themselves or, 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 or taken action on that because, um, like I said, with Alvarez, it's hard to say, you know, that he's slipping. But those slippages, you got to be at the very beginning of them because once everybody knows they're slipping – then, you know, the odds all change here. So that's you right. got to get into early on. And I thought <clears throat> that, you know, his power, his ability to just sit, knock people out hasn't shown itself his last couple of fights. He couldn't get Bibble out of there. Obviously, mm -hmm. Bibble beat him. And then he fought, uh, you know, Golovkin again. And, you know, they went the distance there. So there was a chance. And, uh, you know, John Ryder made me look good. And, uh, you know, I hope that his career picks up, you know, to, to get him another big fight or two, you know, from this and that he gets something for this because uh, it was a great performance. I think it was too. I think he deserves it. And and honestly, if you you look back against sort of BJ Saunders, these were close fights too. <clears throat> yeah. So he is right up there with those guys and deserving. I'd like to see him fight again as well. So uh, your UFC picks were, were one and one, I got to say. Uh, and even that was a split decision. Cejudo got a, a split decision. Uh, but but Mighty Mouse won on the one FC card on yeah, I did, Friday I did night. I picked him in the third, and, and he went the distance. So in that respect, I was a little off. Um, <clears throat> but we've learned lessons, and, and that'll affect the Haney betting, which is where we're heading now. The week, this is our wage raids preview and odds. We're going to look at three fights for you real quick. These are uh, interesting because you can watch early on Saturday on The Zone and later at night on ESPN for the Haney Lomachenko. Now, the early one is in Dublin, Ireland. This is Katie Taylor's sort of triumphant homecoming, her 17th title fight in a row here. Um, this was supposed to be the rematch with Amanda Serrano. We want to wish her the best in recovering from her injury. Um, that was a great fight that Katie did win. But we want to keep in mind, Amanda has fought most of her career around 122. Katie's at 135. Amanda went up for that fight. <clears throat> Katie is now going up. This is undisputed champion at 135 versus undisputed champion at 140. Chantel Cameron, 17 and 0 with eight knockouts. Katie Taylor, 22 and 0 with six knockouts. So, I don't want to belabor is Amanda Serrano or Chantel Cameron the better fighter. I'm not really here to do that other than to say Chantel is a bigger fighter, a much bigger fighter. A 20 pound weight class difference. She probably rocks around 25, 30 pounds bigger than Amanda Serrano. I think Katie Taylor is in against a formidable opponent. The odds are minus 180 for Katie Taylor, plus 140 for Chantel Cameron. They do have the mutual opponent of Jessica McCaskill. I uh, want to point out that McCaskill beat Cecilia Breakhouse twice. And that is the second fight on that card of note. Terry Harper 
versus Cecilia Breakhouse, plus 340 for Cecilia, uh, a favorite of minus 550 for Terry Harper. Terry Harper's one loss was to Alicia Baumgartner. Again, Breakhouse lost twice to Jessica McCaskill. At 41 years of age, uh, Breakhouse is in against a uh, pretty good fighter in Terry Harper. This is going to be a good fight, I believe. Both these fights in uh, Ireland should be really good, Miguel. Yeah, for sure. The ladies, uh, you know, kind of carrying uh, the boxing stick this weekend, and it's in good hands. You know, these are good fights in terms of, you know, the history behind them and everything. Uh, you know, Katie Taylor getting the fight back at home. Um, you know, the uh, legend of Cecilia Brackhouse as well, you know, would uh, be, you know, there was a point where Cecilia was considered the, the Floyd Mayweather of the women's division. You know, and then Tops. She did, absolutely. After being 30, you know, something 38 years <clears throat> old is when she took the losses to McCaskill. So, you know, she's older now. She's a 41. And, uh, you know, it'd be good to see her cash in, maybe get a couple of wins and and retire off into the sunset into a Hall of Fame spot for, you know, women's boxing kind of thing. Um, right. Unfortunately, I don't know, you know, with the paydays and things like that. You know, she may be boxing, you know, and, and may log some losses here. This may be one of them that uh, because her career is extending itself a little more than it should. Um, uh, yeah, the, the Harper is going to be, you know, not 20 years younger, but she's definitely about 15 years younger, you know. And I mean, yeah. those things make a big difference. Uh, you know. Yeah, you're right. 26 years of age for Harper versus 41. So yeah. yeah, you're you're looking at nearly 15 years, um, right there, somewhere right at 15. That's yeah. a big, it's a big difference. Um, so, so uh, you know, you think that Brackhouse is gonna, you know, drink the uh, fountain of youth and the elixir the way she was before. She's also <laughs> going up in weight and a couple of things kind of working against her. I think the uh, yeah. steam in this match is with Harper. The other uh, about uh, between Katie and Chantel is. I, I think more interesting. I think. Oh, absolutely. Uh, um, and you know, picking against Katie at home, Ooh, you you have, have to do. Fight. You may do that at your own risk. If it goes but, to the cards, uh, in Ireland. Speaking of Ireland, we mentioned this briefly off air, but uh, no UFC picks this week, but we're still going to talk about Conor McGregor. Uh, Conor stepped in and had a meeting with Eddie Hearn. And uh, they they had dinner together. Basically, this fight was in danger of happening due to uh, there were some arena issues. The, the 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 deposit needed put down issues like that, and then security because it is such a big fight uh, needed to be amped up as well. So basically, there were some financial issues that were hurdles to make this happen. Conor McGregor, who's been a longtime fan of Katie Taylor, wanted this fight to happen in Ireland. So he stepped in, he's a sponsor, and he provided money to make it happen. So for what it's worth, for all the trouble the guy can cause, he did help make this fight happen. And uh, so I got to be thankful for, for Conor McGregor for that, <laughs> at the very yeah, least. Sure. You know, I, I, Conor's been, uh, you know, lined up for a fight with Michael Chandler. It's not official yet, but they, you know, they were on TV or slated for the TV show. <clears throat> yeah, I think it premieres in, uh, in a week or two. And, yeah. Uh, you know, the problem here is that, you know, in that time, McGregor is not complied with the drug testing uh, criteria. So that it's open to question whether he'll fight or not. Uh, he also made an unscheduled, like the UFC wasn't aware that he was going to go to the BKFC. Yeah. Show. And that's kind of a no-no to show up under another flag and, you know, make yeah. a spectacle of yourself. You go in the ring and, you know. They, they even threw a belt across his shoulder. A, a, yeah. a bare knuckle fight championship belt was thrown across his shoulder as he goes face to face with, uh, what was it? Mike Perry, I believe. Yeah. Yep. And you, you got to you gotta think of the fact that, you know, um, Conor may have outgrown the UFC. I think he wants to do, the, the, like, you know, a bare knuckle fight. One bare knuckle fight could be enough to get Conor, you know, back another $100 million payday. You know, that's it's not the kind of sport I think you want to extend yourself and do like, you know, 15 fights in and stuff. I think, you know, but a guy like that in a spectacle fight in and out, I think it was a possibility for Nganu and Tyson Fury to spice it up if they met in a bare knuckle fight. 
Mm. I think that they would get everybody's attention and it wouldn't be as slanted towards Fury, right? Same right. thing here, but if, if uh, you know, those are the two guys, to, to me, McGregor and Fury are the two guys that are the power draws in the sport right now. I, I agree but with by that. By that, by uh, sport, I mean combat. Yep, yep. Well, I guess we should get to the the real main event this weekend, not to, let's call them two main events. Katie, Katie deserves her own. But uh, but the the nighttime show for us here in America, Devin Haney versus Vasily Lomachenko. Now this one is a very interesting fight. MGN Grand in Las Vegas, ESPN, I believe pay per view. Uh, Devin Haney is the favorite, minus two seventy. Lomachenko is at a plus two hundred. Uh, I believe he was at one eighty and one fifty. He's now at plus two hundred. We'll probably get around to that on Thursday's Pyatt Picks. Some of these numbers will dig in a little further. But you're talking about Vasily Lomachenko has been seven years on the pound-for-pound pound list, former number one, uh, still pound-for-pound pound king. He could fight at 126, 130, 135, but um, he does rate higher than Devin Haney, who's the undisputed champion. Um, Haney deserves a lot of respect. The, the kid is phenomenal. I do mention, though, that he's had the easiest path to undisputed in the four belt area. And uh, people would take some offense to that sometimes. And and I say, well, I put him in the top 10. Isn't that good? You know, they say, OK, top 10, not so bad. I got him 10th. There's only mm -hmm. been nine in the four belt era. <laughs> so, so once I tell him there's only been nine and I have Haney 10th, I'm just kidding, folks. Settle down. Settle down. But he has had the easiest path to Undisputed. Look, we all know what happened with Cambosis. Um, you know, Tiafimo gets beat by Cambosis. Uh, Haney only has to beat Cambosis to become Undisputed. Lomachenko's fighting a war in Ukraine, or he would have fought Cambosis. Um, so he didn't have to go. He didn't have to collect the belts through different people, is what I'm saying. One guy had the belts. He had one, the other guy had three. They fight, you're undisputed. It, it, it was one fight. So rather easy. Look, the guy's huge. He's big, he's strong, he's younger. He walks around probably about 160. He drops. This is something we talked about with 1FC. They don't allow weight cutting. I like that. Um, I don't recall the year they did this, but boxing, you used to have to weigh in the day of the fight. But now a guy that's 160 like Haney can drop to 135 way in the day before and then get some rehydration back in. I think it is starting to hurt him. Um, but I don't know that it's healthy for guys to do that. I like the 1FC model. As you mentioned, someone passed away from, from weight cutting and they did away with that. Um, I think Haney's probably going to move up to 140 after this fight. He could fight at 147 if he wanted, but 140 I think is what he probably moves up. I don't know that he stays for maybe one more fight against Shakur or Tank. Um, you know, I think he lacks some power, especially if he moves up, and then he could be in trouble against the bigger guys when he's not the bigger guy. As for Lomachenko, in some ways this is a no-lose situation because, you know, he should fight at 130, maybe 126. He is moving up. That's why when a guy like, Canelo gets beat by Bivol. He stays higher on the pound for pound. Um, Haney's a big guy. Loma's a small guy. It's not going to hurt Loma's sort of Hall of Fame chances if he loses this fight. It's not even going to hurt his chance at a title because the, the boss man, Bob Arum, has already said that uh, Loma gets another title fight. If, if, uh, if Haney moves up, as expected, Loma will fight for those titles, probably against Shakur. Very tough fight there as well. Um, but you know, Jermaine Ortiz, who Loma just fought, he's actually a very good fighter, sort of like John Ryder, pretty good fighter, better than people thought. Jermaine Ortiz is going to do something in this sport. Um, Loma maybe did look a little old, a little slow, been injured, two shoulder surgeries. Can he set all that aside? Can, can he find his speed? Can he find heart? Can he start the fight fast instead of how he sometimes starts slow? Um, it's hard maybe not to look at it at plus 200, but, uh, I give, give Haney the favorite in this one, obviously. Um, it's, it's a David and Goliath almost situation. I think you had mentioned 
it's Rigandal versus Loma, except now Loma's Rigandal, now <laughs> the smaller guy. I think that was a great analogy, uh, Miguel. Uh, interesting fight. Give, give us a little more of your thoughts on this one, please. Yeah, I think I'm going to learn my lesson from having picked Henry Sejudo uh, for the UFC pick last week because yeah. smaller athletes at 35 start to lose their speed and their precision before they start to lose their power. And if ever we've seen a fighter that counts on speed and precision, <laughs> you know, I think it's Lomachenko at his peak, you know, that's right. When, when he was the flavor of the, of the year and he spent a few years on top, he was untouchable. And what was it? It was, you know, the, the, the work, the work he put into, you know, the pace and again, the, the way he looked too, in, in, in so precise, so speedy. Mm -hmm. footwork angles speed yep. all that stuff fades as you get older and get yep. miles in age yeah and, 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 and yeah you're a little a tiny bit slower but also now you're not as creative and, and you're falling back into patterns that a guy like haney will eventually you know guys like that eventually like okay, they see something in the second round and in the eighth round is when they're going to act on it you know mm -hmm. they got to let it happen and let it happen and watch it and get to know it it's you know, that's the level of sophistication of Lomachenko's game. But I think, yeah, without having extreme power and by the fact that he's going to lose his, be losing his, uh, you know, Haney's still in the prime of his career and he's huge. And this is a very notable size difference. It's, I don't remember no, huge. with weight cutting and things. I don't remember seeing guys that different in size it, since Rigandau and, <laughs> and, and, right. and uh, right. that's, that's what reminded me of that. So, um, but does the weight cut the, the the difference there is that Loma wasn't cutting weight to fight Rigandau in the same way that Haney has to cut. I mean, you know, going from 160 to 135, um, the last two times that Haney's weighed in, he 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 really does look, you know, little little dark in the eyes and a little, you know, not not it doesn't look like he's real healthy is what i'm getting at is that gonna can that catch up to a guy that is this and kind of like you said with canelo his father time caught up well father time's not catching up with haney but is the weight cut gonna finally catch up with him one of these times you know and make him a little slower a little weaker a little not at his peak and is that just enough for loma to pull the upset you know weight cutting is something that there's levels to the game too, you know? So there are guys that cut weight and this, that, or a few pounds and this, that, or, you know, whatever. And then there's the guys that come in ready to do a 25 pound cut, you know, in 24 to 48 hours. The UFC has gotten to that point as well, you know? So, and, and it physically can be done. I think you're right that um, younger men are, are better able to recover from it and it shows less. And as you age and you get a little bigger, you know, if Haney, you know, has been having trouble, maybe he always made it. You said we say 160, but maybe it was always all right. I I'll show up at 156, and then he, he now this time he shows up at 161. Now now he's got to cut five more pounds than he's really used to off. You know, it's scientific, and if anything goes wrong for Haney, it could be a problem. But I think unfortunately for him, I think the move to 140 is going to see him fighting guys where his power may let him down. And there are guys that are talented there. I know he's a few years removed, but, you know, Terrence Crawford, uh, uh, Regis Prograde, they're good fighters in this weight class, you know, mm -hmm. um, with power. So I don't know if it, Haney keeps these titles, he should stay in this weight class and close it out if he can. There's there's a lot of fights here. you still got Lopez. Yep. Well, I think Haney's best served but if he wins this fight with Lomachenko and he's favored to do so, staying here and defending the belts and, you know, making this your weight class, if you can, even though there's solid competition from Stevenson to, you know, uh, Josh Taylor to, you know, Teofimo Lopez, Lopez to Tank to, you know, there are fights there for him that could be turned into big fights. Um, try to stay there and dominate them. I think at 140 as prospects of being super elite uh, go to diminish a little bit. I, I agree. I agree. He's going to run into bigger boys and uh, his power doesn't really translate to these smaller guys. He's fighting all that. Well, 
yeah. about a 50% knockout rate. But I, I want to point out that 50% knockout rate um, came, came in Mexico in bars. It really did. And and partially because he had to. He, you know, he turned pro at such a young age that you can't fight in a lot of American states at, you know, what is it, 17, 18 uh, things like that. They they won't let they you can't get sanctioned. So when he was fairly young, he was knocking guys out. Um, and and it, it was the same bars from what I understand. I I forget the name of it, but basically, his early competition was not great, and he was knocking a lot of those guys out. When he started fighting guys that are comparable to the guys that his peers fight his knockout rate is abysmal and his power did not translate and it will not translate to 140. Uh, Devin Haney to me has a small window in which to achieve greatness to the level that he may get into the hall of fame. Undisputed helps alone. It's not enough. He's yeah, he's got it. He's got to bulk up the resume. I, I looked it up yeah. here. It's, it's called the BR El Pero. BR is like a pool hall. A pool hall, yeah, a, 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 a pool hall for dogs. <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, literally. Dogs. And this is in Tijuana where, you know, we, we have experience with, you know, MMA shows on a lower scale and, you know, that go down there and stuff like that. And it can get pretty rough. It's good life experience, maybe, get in and out there a few times and, you know, make your money, get your experience and things. It looks like he did about four fights that way. Um, but you're right. I mean, he, I think he's knocked three of those guys out and, you know, yeah. that's his knockout right now is at 50%. So that 75 that he had going in, you know, four and oh was, uh, he's chipping away at it. He's not knocking people out. No, no, it's just not happening. And, uh, that doesn't mean he's not a great fighter. The kid's got skills. He's got defensive skills. Um, we don't know if he's one of those greats that has a lot of heart to go with it, you know, um, is, is he going to challenge himself? Is someone going to challenge him? Um, and that's one of the things that doesn't happen enough in the modern world of boxing. So we'll see, we'll see where they go, but yeah, I'd like to see him get in there and fight Josh Taylor, Tiafima Lopez, um, Tank yeah. Davis, Tank yeah. Davis, you know, Thank let's get sure. to it. Shakur. Those are the types of fights I think they can. They all the guys should sit right there at one thirty-five and do it. And you're and you could, do it. We could be entering an era similar to, you know, uh, Hearns, Hagler, Leonard, and Duran. Right. You know, um, the four kings. Yeah. Beautiful. Exactly. Beautiful you know, era. They were in the middleweights, I believe, in in that area. Uh, it was the best fighting going on, and these guys have a chance of achieving that, lifting the whole weight class together, because there's That's a right. lot of talent there. And uh, this this weekend's fight, I think, has the uh, you know the makings of uh, if Haney gets his way, it's it's going to be a torch passing because uh, you know Lomachenko, he may get if if Haney moves up, he may be back in another title fight. But you know that's the promoter managing things at that point. He he will have slipped. Right, absolutely, and he should be off the pound for pound list at that point. Um, in the whole bit, it's a, it, it is a passing of the torch. I would, I would advocate for Haney to be on the pound for pound list, the ring pound for pound list, the original one, um, which he's had his eye on and he, and he's been upset that he's not on it and he, and he wants his respect. And to an extent, I think he deserves to be on the list. He wants to be number one. I don't think you can take a fight against this Lomachenko ranked number seven on that list as a bigger fighter that Haney is and expect to be number one on that list. It doesn't make sense to me. But to be on the list, absolutely. I think Loma should should come off and Haney should come on uh, when and if Haney wins this fight. If Loma wins the fight, Loma's back in the top five. He moves from seven to, to five. You know, I mean, he becomes a very valuable, highly ranked pound for pound fighter. Um, if he can beat beat Haney, yeah. um, as I say, it's it's a Herculean task. I, I yeah. don't don't expect it, but but who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Like I said, at, at, at his size, at his age, there are not a many guys that can continue being at the elite. And he's been at the elite for such a long time. Yeah. 
Over 400 no, fights. That's a, we got to keep that in mind. His body has been in 400 fights. His shoulders, his, you know, 396 and one uh, in the amateurs. The one loss of uh, avenged twice. So uh, arguably the best amateur ever. But that's 400 fights. Um, and, and, and yeah, so, it's it's definitely and then he's been in and, and, 17, and 18 title fights. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna. His age and the mileage. So, uh, still an interesting fight. We will be back Thursday with Pyatt Picks to go over these and a few more. Uh, Miguel asked about another sort of usually eight leg parlay. Something we'll come up with. Uh, and we will work on that as we get a little bit closer. There's only about six fights on FanDuel as we speak. We'll let a few more pop up. We'll take a look at BetUS, and we'll definitely come up with some parlays, and we'll come up with a whole package for you. All the bets will act symbiotically. Uh, big bets for $100, $50 bets, $25 bets. You can put your own increments. Those are just the ratios that, that we've been using. So uh, please do subscribe. Follow us at Pyapix on most of the platforms. And, uh, and here on YouTube, subscribe, share with your friends.